This video explains the ship's magnetism uh, and how a ship gets induced by the Earth's magnetism and by its own magnetism as well. So basically this will explain how a ship behaves like a magnet itself. Alright, so before you see this video, I hope you have watched the other videos in this series. I will provide you with the links of those videos as well. So you must have some basic idea of how a magnetic needle behaves and I'll quickly summarize it for you. So a magnetic needle if suspended freely aligns itself with the magnetic lines of forces of the earth and that means that the north end of the magnet which is denoted by the red color attracts itself or points towards the magnetic north and the south end of the magnet is denoted by the blue color. Because the north end of the magnet gets attracted towards the Earth's North Pole, the Earth's North Magnetic North is denoted by the opposite color, that is blue color. And the South is denoted by the red color. Anyhow, as I go along, I'll, keep, I'll give you a quick recap of that lesson as well. Otherwise, you can watch my video in that series about geomagnetism and uh, how the Earth's magnetism affects the magnetic properties of a magnetic bar suspended freely. But this is about a ship's magnetism. And this will explain how a ship gets influenced by the Earth's magnetism. Alright, so there are some naturally occurring uh, magnets on the Earth, uh, in the Earth's surface rather. So for example, lodestone is a natural magnet. That means it gets uh, naturally induced by the Earth's magnet. So if I make a needle out of lodestone and I suspend it freely, it will behave exactly how a magnet does. So it will align itself with the Earth's magnetic lines of forces. So Earth emits magnetism all the time. So magnetic lines of forces emit from one pole and enter the other pole and uh, magnetic lines of median are running through the earth's surface and they are parallel and not intersecting at all. So these are the principles we'll be using now to explain how a ship's magnetism gets uh, influenced. So basically a ship behaves like a magnet uh, when it is constructed. So a ship is made of hard iron and soft iron. Uh, hard iron is the one that is uh, permanently magnetized. Uh, so hard iron um, once magnetized will remain permanently magnetized in that condition. But although it's hard to magnetize it, it's not easy to magnetize a hard iron, but once it does get magnetized, it remains so, and therefore magnetism of hard iron is called permanent magnetism, right? because it's difficult to unmagnetize it. Soft iron, on the other hand, is an iron that is easy to magnetize, but it also quickly loses its magnetism. So that's why soft iron can, is magnetized only when under the influence of a magnetic field and only in the direction of that field. As soon as the field ceases to act, the soft iron ceases to be magnetized. So it loses its acquired magnetism. Since its gain and loss of magnetism is very quick, it's called temporary or induced magnetism. So with hard iron it's permanent and with soft iron it's Now soft iron and hard iron represent two theoretical extremes, neither of which can be accurately described in practice. So the terms soft and hard are also used in a relative sense. A piece of iron may be soft when compared with another piece and at the same time hard when compared with a third. So in practice every piece of iron has some quality of hard iron and some quality of soft iron depending on which is greater or more dominant the piece, the iron piece shows those properties. A vessel built of iron and steel is not built of materials specifically chosen for its magnetic properties, with the exception of, of course, some light structures, such as accommodation, which are situated close to the compass. We can therefore expect to find that the material affecting the ship's compass has both permanent and induced magnetism, because the ship is made up of both hard and soft iron. It, it, it is uh, considered to have both hard iron and soft iron magnetism. When a vessel is being built, she has to lie in the magnetic field of the earth at that place. It gets aligned with the magnetic field lines of that place. The steel is subjected to considerable working and local heating during the process of construction. So all the welding and the hammering and the soldiering uh, that takes place affects the magnetism. The completed vessel therefore assimilates the properties of a permanent magnet on the whole, but also has parts of it that are not magnetized or the parts that lose their magnetic properties easily, which makes it the soft iron component. Alright, so uh, 
with that basically once the ship is constructed the vessel emulates or copies a magnet and displays lines of forces very similar to that of a magnet so it becomes a magnet so those lines of force conventionally come out of the red pole and enter the blue pole similar to a magnet bar so if you haven't seen that video of mine please watch that video with the link below that uh, with the magnetic bar the lines of force come out of the north pole and go into the south pole so the earth also becomes similar the sorry the earth the ship also becomes a similar to a magnetic bar so the lines of force conventionally come out of the red pole and enter the blue pole so the question then asked is which is the blue pole and which is the red pole of the vessel so for this reason we have to look at the direction that the vessel was lying in and where she was built all right so remember i told you that the north pole of a magnetic bar is denoted by the red color and the south pole is denoted by the blue color over here if you look at this example here the ship is built on equator for example where the dip is 0 degree so what is dip dip is the angle that a freely suspended magnetic needle makes with the horizontal now at the equator the magnetic lines of forces are absolutely horizontal so the magnetic needle which is suspended freely aligns itself with those lines which are horizontal since the magnetic needle is absolutely horizontal it doesn't make any angle with the horizontal so the dip is zero dip is also called magnetic inclination so therefore when a ship is built on the equator where the magnetic lines of forces are absolutely horizontal and a freely suspended magnet will be absolutely horizontal this is how a ship acquires its magnetism so it behaves absolutely like a freely suspended magnet which is absolutely horizontal so the north end of the ship becomes the or the forward part of the ship becomes the north end so the red color and the aft part of the ship becomes the south end so the blue color all right so only four and a half magnetism is induced in this vessel now let's take an example of a ship again which is on the equator and this time it is zero dip of course because the magnetic bar would have been absolutely horizontal and this time it's heading west so in this case it's a thwart ship magnetism that it acquires so the starboard side becomes red because that's attracted towards the north pole of the magnetic north pole and the port side becomes blue because uh, it's the opposite side of the magnet so the entire starboard side of the vessel is then the red color and then the sport side becomes the blue color of a magnet all right another example is ship on magnetic north with a 90 degree dip heading is not applicable the reason it's not applicable is when you go to magnetic north a magnetic needle is absolutely horizontal at the equator this is what i have told you now as you start moving towards the poles the magnetic needle will start getting attracted towards the north pole and so it starts to make angles with the horizontal that's what is called dip as it starts to make angles so it starts to dip the north end of the magnetic bar or the magnetic needle starts to dip towards the earth's magnetic north pole at the north pole it becomes absolutely vertical because it dips completely due to the intensity of the magnetic lines of force at the poles so when it dips completely the north end of the magnetic needle which is the red end goes down and the blue end comes up this happens at the north pole on the south pole it's the opposite the blue end goes down and the north and the red end comes up because the ship here is on magnetic north imagine a needle the needle will be absolutely vertical with the red end dipping down and the blue end dipping up so the top portion will be the blue part of the magnet and the bottom portion will be the red part of the magnet all right and that's why only vertical magnetism is induced in this vessel no horizontal magnetism is induced because the magnetic needle would be absolutely vertical so these are again different examples here this example is ship built in the northern hemisphere heading south so the vessel takes up induced magnetism such that she ends with her stern as the red pole and her bow as the blue pole because she is heading south so this vessel you can imagine it to be consisting of a number of horizontal magnets with blue forward and red aft and also a number of vertical magnets with blue on top and red below all right because the red dips downwards the red portion dip is dipping downwards as you can see the, this is a magnetic needle as it heads towards the earth's magnetic north pole 
it starts to dip downwards because it is attracted towards the magnetic north pole and that's why the earth's magnet is color coded in the opposite colors because the red is getting attracted and like poles of a magnet repel and unlike poles attract each other so a magnetic needle as it starts to go towards the northern hemisphere the not the red part of it the red part of the magnetic needle dips downwards all right that's why if a ship is built in the northern hemisphere and is heading southward this is how it will acquire its magnetism imagine a ship built in the northern hemisphere with an angle of dip of 65 degrees this means that the magnetic lines of forces make an angle of 65 degrees with the horizontal so this is how it will end up all right again because it's in the northern hemisphere the north part of the needle will be dipping downwards so that's why that's why even though the magnetic lines of forces are 65 degrees they enter the ship at that angle but it will be the red end downwards and the blue end will be upwards at an angle of 65 degree all right ship built in the northern hemisphere heading west she will end up with her starboard side as the red side and port side as the blue side it's like horizontal magnets with blue to the port and vertical magnets with blue to and finally the last example if a ship is built in the northern hemisphere but heading northeast the port side and the forward portion become red in color and the starboard side and aft portion are blue in color all right so you get the idea so in all the three cases you can see the effect of the vessel's field on the compass to be the same as that of the number of magnets lying either forward and aft or upward ship or vertically with their blue and red ends in the same direction as that of the vessel's colored ends as shown all right so this becomes like a so the ship itself becomes a compass so the compass of the ship itself starts to have a forward and aft component of magnetism an upward ship component of magnetism as well as a vertical component all three together give you the total resultant magnetic field all right but ship doesn't only get induced by the permanent magnetism and the earth's magnetic field it also gets induced by because of its soft ion component that is a temporary magnetism so the hard ion component takes up the permanent magnetism but the soft ion component of the ship gets induced by the earth's magnetic field and that's why it gets temporarily induced so every time a ship changes heading the magnetic lines of forces or the angle at which the magnetic lines of forces enter it changes direction right so the angle of dips keeps changing with changing heading that's why the soft ion component or the soft ion of the ship gets induced by temporary magnetism at different angles of dip with change in heading due to this the deviation changes with change in heading so the temporary magnetism if you look at it it also has a horizontal soft part and a vertical soft ion the induction is maximum at the magnetic poles because that's where the magnetic lines of forces are stronger or the strongest but with the horizontal component the induction is maximum at the magnetic equator because at the magnetic equator there is no vertical component the magnetic needle would be suspended freely absolutely horizontal so there is no word vertical component So the word with the vertical soft ion, the induction is maximum at the poles because that's where the magnetic needle goes and dips absolutely vertically. It becomes absolutely vertical, but the induction is zero at the magnetic equator because there is no vertical component. Change in the hemisphere, of course, will reverse the polarity because as you go towards the north hemisphere, the red end of the magnet goes down, but as you go towards the southern hemisphere, the blue end of the magnet goes down. And this is how the ship gets. so you can see the difference between permanent and temporary and how it causes magnetism on the ship and that's why deviation changes with the change in the heading because every time the heading changes the lines of magnetic lines of force the way they enter it the angle of dip keeps changing so the soft ion component keeps on changing but it gains and loses that very quickly because it's soft ion with the permanent magnetism once it acquires it it keeps it and that kind of forms the main part of the ship's magnetism 
Right, so this is how the magnetic needle dips into the vertical poles. So the red end goes down in the north pole and the blue end goes down in the south pole. So I hope this was easy for you to understand that uh, uh, the horizontal and the vertical component of the soft band and the deviation and why it changes with head. Alright, so I'll see you guys soon with my next video. Keep watching. Bye.